Welcome to Graber Works. I hope you enjoyed today's video, and if you do, please like, subscribe, and comment. Today's video is about boring on a Grizzly GO704 mill. In machining, boring is the process of enlarging a hole that has already been drilled by the means of a single point cutting tool. Because of the limitations on the tooling design imposed by the fact that the workpiece mostly surrounds the tool, boring is inherently somewhat more challenging than turning in terms of decreased tool holding rigidity, increased clearance angle requirements, and difficulty of inspection of the resulting surface. These are the reasons why boring is viewed as an area of machining practice in its own right. The dimensions between the workpiece and the tool bit can be changed about two axes cut both vertically and horizontally. Boring heads have three primary components. The parts include the body, the bar holder, and the dial screw. The body made of solid stock has two basic parts. The top part threads or presses into a supporting shank. The lower part, bar holder, is connected via dovetail. T-slots are smooth notch with an adjustment for the bore diameter via dial screw. As the dial screw is adjusted, the cutting bits are moved further out, creating a larger cut. Once the dial screw has been adjusted to give a proper cut, a set screw is generally used to prevent any additional movement of the cutting head. The third basic part is the boring tool. Boring tools can be mounted vertically or horizontally in many boring head designs. The cutting tool is usually a single point made of M2 or M3 high speed steel. Using a boring bar to enlarge an existing hole is a simple, straightforward process. However, when trying to hit a particular size and tight tolerance, everything begins to matter. Boring bar selection and the setup, cutting edge geometry, tool deflection, lubrication, cutting parameters, chip evacuation, part temperature, and our ability to measure the bore accurately and precisely. With all metal cutting processes, stiffness is the key when boring, so do everything you can to maximize it. Use the largest diameter boring bar and the shortest clamping length possible. Many boring bars do not have alignment flats on them, so it is necessary to orient the flat surface of the cutting edge so it passes through the center line of the spindle axis. This orientation is referred to as a neutral rake angle and is the safest for most materials and the only orientation that works properly when using these types of boring bars in a boring head. When setting a boring bar with no alignment flats, it is always necessary to perform a test cut to ensure the rake angle is set properly. When setting up the workpiece, always ensure adequate clearance exists beneath it and the vise if boring a through hole.
When using a boring head on a milling machine, it's best to begin with a cutting speed equal to half the typical computed value and work your way up if vibration and tool life allow. For safety reasons and due to the rotational imbalance inherent in a boring head, rotate the boring head at the slowest speed possible to start and then gradually increase the speed. Consistency is critical to obtaining good, repeatable results when using boring heads. You want to vary the fewest parameters possible during each cut, and preferably only one at a time until the desired outcome is achieved. Anything that affects the cutting force at the tool tip will change the amount of material removed as well as the surface finish. Bore measurements can be made using dial, digital calipers, inside mic, small hole gauges, telescoping gauges, or bore gauges that depend on budget, operator skill, and required measurement accuracy. The boring head I'm using was about 75 years old and belonged to my dad. It was in really bad shape from lack of use and abuse from others who got it before me. The bar holder was frozen and would not move, and as a result, the dial screw would only move about a quarter inch of a turn. After disassembling, I discovered that the set screw was screwed into the dovetail ways and distorted the ways. I cleaned up the ways with a file and fine stone make sure the ways were as close to original as I could get them. I then made a small brass plug to ride against the ways when the screw was tightened down to keep from marring the ways again. I used a high pressure grease to lube it up and reassembled the boring head. That worked well and I did not have any issues with adjusting the head when using it. As you can see, the boring head had a three-quarter inch shank on it and it was in good shape. The adjustment was accomplished by loosening the screw and then turning the dial screw, which had a veneer scale of 40 thousandths for one revolution. It was not real accurate, but within a few thousands, and seeing how the hole I was boring was for clearance only, I accepted the issue and the results. I drilled a one half inch hole to start with, and the final hole was to be one and a half inch on the plus side. I did set up the head to remove about 20 thousandths on each pass in the aluminum workpiece I measured the hole with the digital calipers after the first two boring operations. After that, I took about 50 thousandths on each pass. The hole ended up being one inch, 
510 on my last pass and I stopped with the boring operation. I did drill several holes in the workpiece before the boring operation needed to burr those holes on the back side. I mounted a countersink in the Jacobs chuck and deburred the workpiece by hand. I found it satisfying that I repaired and used a tool that belonged to my dad. I was bummed out that it had gotten so bad, but thankful it was repairable and it will have a place in my toolbox and brought out on to use on occasion when the work does not require tight tolerances. I will make something to store it in, maybe a wooden box or a 3D felt line box. If you have any ideas or suggestions, please put them in the comments. Thank you for watching Graber Works, and I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did like the video, please give a thumbs up, subscribe for future videos, and comment. Thanks again.